Oui. Yes. Yes. Right. How we can overcome this is one at a time. Because there are certain trees who have to go out and replace with a female tree. Because we planted at that time, when those trees are 25, 30 years old, some of them will grow 50 or 60 years old. But the sad part of it is, some of them have to be moved or rejuvenated. And then we can have the female tree to collect those male pollens as much as possible. It's a huge job, but again and again, and I should have mentioned that, it's for the children of the future. It is for our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, who will benefit what we will do today or tomorrow. But it is a, it's a huge job. But I work with the Roman Catholic School Board in uh, Hamilton, and um, when the notice went out, they have to contact me first if they're going to replace trees. And I love it. And I honestly um, charge for it? No, because that school board will be the first one in Canada who really takes this serious. Thomas Ogren and I are, um, Thomas Ogren is this year traveling from coast to coast here in Canada, and we have really our you see, Healthy Schoolyards, the initiative, we started that. The school board can only control the trees on school board property. Right, yes. So I cannot even go to a city council. That's out. The city council, school board only. But again, one by one, huh? slowly but surely, replace them, start replacing. Get that a little bit more in balance of the 80 20 ratio. Try to get as much as possible. It, it's, it's a huge job, there's no doubt about it, but somebody has to start it. And Thomas Ogren and I are very proud to say we have started this and we get, yeah, I, I checked it on the website the other day for the um, schoolyards from the Ukraine. 46 clicks now from the Ukraine. So all over the world the people are coming to that website and saying, okay, and we have now expanded to watch out what are not good trees to plant. And again, I agree with you wholeheartedly that it is an enormous job, but it has to be done. And um, yes, ma'am? No, no. It is one female for 15 male. So you'll get that male tree out, you know, and replace them. But the, the ratio, yes, if you can already start with replacing one female, huh, because we need only one female tree to be pollinated, and that can be by 15 male trees. Right. Yeah. So we can have 15 male and one female to collect those pollens and clean the air. Yes, sir? How do you tell the difference between the male tree and the female? Okay. Um, in early spring, at blooming time, you take a black piece of paper, and um, whatever, but cardboard paper and black, and you uh, take the branch and shake it out and you will find the yellow pollen ah that's a male and if the stigma comes up that's the female that is the the, the, the difference but you can do at home for it and botanists uh, not easy but it is it's possible yeah uh, do you think that uh City councils and municipalities are aware of this problem? No. 
or they have to head in the sand and most of them do have because it is costly. But Thomas Ogren wrote this book 11 years ago and he really pushed it until he was almost bankrupt. He did his damnedest to really push that subject and it, it didn't go anywhere. And except Albuquerque, New Mexico, you go to Las Vegas now, uh -uh, it's pollen, almost pollen free. Um, it is Tucson, Arizona, exactly the same. Now there are three cities and I challenge any city in Canada to say, from, okay, and I will go, and I've told my wife, I said, I will go at my expense to that city and say, from, all right, I will spend a day, for instance, with them and say, from, okay, what you have to do or what you have done, etc. You know, go through the whole process. But it is very important that we really t take a stand on this. Um, yes? There's also pollen from other from weeds, ragweed or something like that. Ragweed or the ragweed or ambrosia is the, uh, the Latin word. Yes, in the fall. Huh? That is what we call the hay fever. Right. Um, it is hay fever. There's nothing to do with fever. It is only because during that time is when we make the second cutting for haying. And we used only the, the fork huh? and not much machinery. And so they call it hay fever. And from there on, they, um, yes, the ambrosia is one of the worst ones I had. Thank God I don't have it, but I know many sufferers of it. And, uh, but, now you should go through the history of Montreal. And I, I think it was in the 30s or 40s that the city of Montreal started this, that they had the kids pulling out the ragweed everywhere. And that's why you have one of the safest, safest cities in Canada. You didn't know that part maybe, but it is of course it has grown up again and not, um, but that was extremely interesting that they had kids for days on end pulling out their eggweed and everywhere because they didn't know anything better, huh? but they did know that it would give problems in the future and uh, yeah, unfortunately. Yes ma'am? Ma'am, as you hear of my accent, I'm Dutch originally. And this week, there is the Landscape Ontario huge show in Toronto. But two years ago, I went over there with Opal's rating. Peter, please shut up. Huh? Get out of here. One man. Of course, he talked in Dutch because he didn't want to hear everybody, the English version. He said, if I have to follow you and what you're telling me, he said, half of my tree nursery is, I have to cut it down, put it on a pile and burn it. And I said, John, Jan, eh, Dutch, if you do only a quarter of it, I will put you on the world map. No, oh, Peter, no. I went to the biggest nurseries, and Tom Ogren and I went this year, last year, to the biggest nurseries here in Canada. Well, we will think about it. It is all the bottom line, the money. But the first, and you will see, the first nursery who will offer trees, allergy-free trees, will be sold out before you know it, because of, but we, Tom and I, have proposed to several of the big, and I mean big nurseries in Canada, we'll 
tag them that we know exactly that you're getting a female because through manipulations, through all kinds of doctoring, I call it, of the species, we might get to understand that those people only sell only that particular species. There's, as I mentioned, the Acer rubrum, that's a, there are three, four Acer rubrum, the maple tree, there are approximately four or five of them. But there are also the Acer freemani, and there are three or four of them. Again, that is, an, that is a cloning of a red maple and a white maple. And gorgeous, and I mean a gorgeous tree, very low in rating, and the rating is, I think it's around a two. We can all plant those, huh? but, uh, and it is really <laughs> so interesting. Uh, coming back to uh, maybe, oh, sorry, maybe there's another question first. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, you did. Uh, I just had one more. Yeah. <clears throat> In one of your slides you mentioned LED. Leads. The Leads program, yeah. That's Does that include any mention about this fact? Leads is in the United States and in Canada for the builders, for the condo builders, for everything, that everything is environmental friendly. That is the Leads program. Um, as I mentioned, we try to get the outdoors now registered and everything else. But there is a lot of water going under the bridge for that one before uh, the people are really starting to get this. But you have no idea how happy I am that I'm here tonight to talk with you about this because it, it is um, one of my yeah, pet projects. And, uh, and if there any other question, please. Basically what you, what you imply in the lecture is that uh, there are more allergies now than before. Oh, yes. But because of the augmentation of pollen in the air. Right. Right. We, we wanted easy way. We, 20, 25 years ago, no litter, no fuss. Huh? We want a nice, clean garden. We want to have everything nice and clean and no debris. That's actually what it boils down to. And now we pay the piper for it. If you see the billions of dollars are spent. Yes. It is so nice that you asked that question because I'm, yes, I'm going to mention uh, to, matter of fact, yesterday. I don't know if you know the, the magazine Allergic Living. Allergic Living, you can go on the website. And that lady wrote to me, she's going to talk with Tom Ogren in California, and she's coming to Canada, she lives in Canada, Saskatoon, matter of fact, and um, on Saturday I will do an interview with her. This is one of the prominent magazines here in Canada to really bring this across. And also the other one, what I like very much, and I have a very good correspondence, is the Allergy and Asthma Network, Mothers with Asthmatics. That is one, that is in the United States, www.aanma.org. Excellent too. You want research and data, the Canadian Lung Association and the Asthma Association, excellent on their website. There is all kinds of it. And of course, if you have more questions, don't hesitate huh, to drop me a note and say, fun, huh, Peter, I met you in um, Montreal and <coughs> please forward your question. And, and I, I, I love to, to get it. Um, my wife says you spend too much time behind your computer, I know. But as I mentioned to this gentleman, <coughs> many Dutch people say, fun, well, after you have reached a certain age, you sit behind the geraniums. Well, I'm not going to sit behind the geraniums yet because there is too much work huh, to do it and work with the children. One of the big part of it is, and Catherine knows that to my wife, <clears throat> I did gardening with cancer patients who I saw one week and two weeks later, I didn't see them, you know, in the hospital. I planted flowers with them. I did everything, trees outside with the ones who were able to do it. 
there are so many nice, nice things which you can do. And this is one of my, as I mentioned before, and I say it again, one, one of my pet projects who will succeed. A lot of work, but it doesn't matter. The allergy-free gardening from Thomas Ogren. You, he has, as of yesterday, over 46 articles. You can just go in there and uh, lots of information what you need. Sorry, I talk again. Any questions? More? Don't hesitate because you have got the opportunity now. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yeah. We talk a lot of money. If we talk always a five inch caliper, I take the five inch caliper tree. The reason is I get le less vandalism. If I take a good size, if I do a very, very small one, <laughs> before you know it. So that's one of the reasons. Then the selection of it, and there are many landscapers around. There are many parents who have allergic children going to school and say, oh my God, if that kid could run outside, walk outside, please, can you donate me, huh? in, for instance, in December? Because the time of purchasing is from September to December that's when the garden centers place their orders for the following year. If you have the in with a tree grower, a reliable, good tree grower, at that time, as I mentioned, September, October, sit down and say, okay, what you got? Huh? There the evaluation sheet will be made. Then you go to the parents and say, look, you know there's no money. Huh? for this, but we can do it. There's a program also in, on, in New York State, Green Schools, but they talk mostly about indoors. Huh? Certain soaps to use, certain uh, wash minerals, uh, uh, washing ingredients, uh, certain toilet paper, you name it, you know, there's all kinds of indoors. Now I'm working also with those people on the outside that please take a proper selection. Yeah, that one of the many kinds of projects you really have to initiate. Um, schoolyard sales, I don't book sales, there are so many things of raising some funds. But to get the governments involved then, that's what I get. Many, many times I bang my head against the wall. Ministries change ministries. Um, well, <laughs> you're nice, but uh, until we get something like with helping Albuquerque, New Mexico, if somebody passes away, and you had, and there is where we, and I did not talk because about it, but we have to understand the different ways of the allergies, what it means actually. And I have written an article not too long ago about it, but the different names, for instance, if it is your nose, your sinuses, you know, we call it hail fever or rhinitis. If it is in the lungs, we call it asthma. If it is in the food, we call it a food allergy or anaphylaxis. And you had recently, matter of fact, I was reading your, your paper, a young girl, anaphylaxis. Huh? And she was dead before you know it. And that is very sad things. But that is food, and so I'm not going over there whatsoever. But with the pollen, slowly but surely, we can build towards it. If it is not in your lifetime, or mine, but in the future. And that's where we have to look at because of the diseases we're getting, now watch out, you'll get shortly an article about maple tree die-off. You remember 
that we had an acid rain for many, many years. I lived, matter of fact, here in Quebec when they talked about it. And what they did to offset the acid rain, we doused it with lime, garden lime. And today, still, you can neutralize that soil if you use plenty of lime in the soil. Yes? Yeah. Then, I mean, it strikes me that even if you create, you know, a schoolyard or, you know, or even like, you know, quite a large area with, that is with allergy free plantings, then you can still have people that are, you know, children in that schoolyard that suffer from allergies because of things nearby. So it just, it, you know, it strikes me that it creates a problem and that it's very difficult to, you know, to demonstrate in a way that this planting has an effect. Or, I don't know, or on the other hand, you know, with the schoolyards and the parks that you've worked on, do you find that, you know, the people go in and they immediately say, oh, my allergies are much better here. I mean, what, what is the you, you will find that in certain areas where they have more allergy-free or female trees, the people will feel better. But here, you, in, in Montreal, or where you have a huge, huge amount of Norway maples. Huh? Shallow rooting, bursting up your sidewalks. Um, those will be shortly have to be replaced also. And there is where the replacement comes in part. But as I mentioned, it is step by step. It is, would be marvelous if we could in one swoop, huh, certain areas in an urban area to only plant female trees and shrubs. I work on a project in Hamilton where there will be a new park, but only with native and non-native plants, allergy free. And that will, if it goes through council, <laughs> it will be the first one in Canada. And it will, but as you said, because of the, the wind who will take the pollen to another area, it is not easy. And, and if we plant more females who will absorb and clean the air of the pollen, we will be better off. But it is a long process, there's no doubt about it. Yes? Can you tell the difference between a male seed and a female seed? Uh, the botanist can. The botanist can. But see, there are no, for the male will have the pollen and the female does not have any pollen. That's the, uh, but the seed of, if you get seeds, you mean uh, in a package, for instance. How do you know what you're planting? No, that is flipping a coin. That is the same as a friend of mine is in the seed business. And he said, Peter, look at this. And I, he called me at home. What happened is that from China, he got seeds and did you know because we Canadians were so smart we marked certain seeds we sent them over to China they cloned them and they sent them back and so here we had a, quite a few Canadian seeds and of course their own cloned seeds so or the there's a lot of yeah, <laughs> difficulties, put it that way. Um, the seed companies is the same. I worked for a well-known seed company for many, many years. I found also that in certain uh, particular areas, I might as well tell you, it was the wildflowers. You know, they can print anything on a package for me. You know, 0.2% of this flower, 0.5 and wrong. How do I know I get a package of two grams, a gram and a half of seeds and say a little prayer or something like that and you know, you get your seeds sprouting and after the sprouting of the seeds you might find the proper ones, what you wanted. The other ones might be saying from, hmm, eh, I'm on. No, it's... Um, yeah, it, it is really something that... Uh, anybody else? Sorry that I... 
Yes. No. Um, on a short-term solution. Yeah. What is the position on air filters and negative ionization to clean up the air and rebalance it so we can breathe it again and add less carbon? So did you hear what she, she asked? Pardon? What else do you think about air filters? Yes, air filters. And, and make air filters are good as long uh, in buildings, for instance, for to have them every week, especially during the pollen season, cleaned. Or in the house, every week. You have to when you are allergic to plants, certain plants, and I wrote that in one of my articles nose and mouth covered, long sleeves, long pants, uh, hat on of course, and after you have gardened, in the afternoon, you come in, drop you in the washing machine, and the big part of it is wash your hair, because the pollen will stick very easily to your hair, and long hair or short hair, it doesn't matter. And that is one of the things to do, because you want to keep on gardening, you want to keep on huh, doing, no problem. But that is very important to uh, keep that in, in mind. And you can grow anything. This is not only with trees, we talk mostly about, but it's also with the annuals and perennials. You know, um, the daisy family, for instance. We all love daisies, right? Well, you take a different look on it for next year if you do not want to have allergies because the daisy is not as good, native or non-native, not to plant. That is one of the perennials, you know. But in general, you're safe. And uh, again, drop me a note if you say, from Peter, huh? this I have in my garden and I will just, you know, I'll make time to just quick, because it is one by one, huh? we have to help each other. And that's what we came here for, to help each other as much as possible. I'm thankful to all the Canadians who helped me. And that is, I look back at the World War II. When, that's, when that package of food came out of the air, and I ran for it, I tell you, and I had my first biscuits, but 16 Canadian soldiers died in my village. And I swore and I said, if there's anything I can do, I will do it. And that's still my pledge. And I'll continue that as long as possible. <laughs> yes.